let's say you have a toy dog. It looks like a dog. It's shaped like a dog. It's even got a collar on it or a label on it somewhere that states that it's a dog and it may even have its name on that tag or the collar. But it won't bark. It will not play. It will not eat. It will not fetch. It will not lie down. It will not roll over. What is it? It's a toy dog. It's a fake. It's a lifeless imitation. It's not the real thing, in other words. Hey, this is Billy Robinson with the Prairie Plains Church of Christ. I welcome you to our Bible lesson for Sunday, August the 23rd of 2020. In relationship to that toy dog that is dead, that is lifeless in comparison to a, an alive dog that's able to bark and to roll over and to fetch and so forth. Listen to the question that James raises in James chapter 2, verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Well, it doesn't profit him anything. Can faith save him? So James is asking rhetorical questions in verses 14 through 26 with an implied answer. He gives the answers. Does a faith without works save any man or any woman? And he answers that question that we notice in verses 14 through 26. He says that faith without works is dead. You meet someone that's destitute of daily food, that doesn't have the necessary clothing. Maybe he's naked. Maybe it's wintertime. He doesn't have the adequate clothing to be outside. In verses 15 through 17, you wish him Godspeed or you wish him best wishes or hope you do well, see you later and do nothing for him. That's a faith without works that is dead. He says that it also can be not demonstrated. Faith without works can be demonstrated, but faith without works cannot be demonstrated in verse 18. Then in verse 19, he says a faith without works is like the faith of demons, the faith of Satan, the faith of his angels. The amazing thing that I see in verse 19 is that the devils are willing to believe in and accept something that a great majority of men and women will not. And what's that? They believe in God. They believe in Jesus Christ. They believe that He is the Son of God. They even confess that. In Mark chapter 5, verse 7, and in verse 6, they fall down before Jesus and they fear judgment. And the reason they fear judgment is because they know what's going to happen to them throughout eternity. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 29, they asked Jesus a question and crying out, What have we to do with thee, Jesus? Notice what they say, Thou Son of God! Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Jesus, it's not time yet. Have you come to the torment us already? They knew who Jesus was and they trembled because they knew who God was. So faith without works is dead. Today he's answering that question. A man without works, can he be saved by that faith? He answers that today in verses 21 through 25. He says, a man is justified by faith plus works. He proves that by using two examples, two illustrations from the Old Testament, the justification of Abraham and the salvation and justification of Rahab. 
Notice with me verses 21 through 24 as we look at the justification of Abraham. Was not Abraham my father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Why is Abraham mentioned in verse 21? That's a good question, isn't it? You remember that James is writing to Jews, Jews that had been scattered. We know from Acts chapter 8, verse 1, many Jews had left Jerusalem. They were scattered abroad through the regions of Judea and Samaria, except for the apostles who remained in Jerusalem. So he's writing to Jews, and Abraham was their father, as it states. He was honored. He was respected. He had a place of esteem among the Jews. You mention his name. You've got their attention. He was the man whom God made great promises to. He was the one that God gave the covenant of circumcision. They knew that Abraham was a great man of faith. A great man of God. Now notice verse 21. It's a rhetorical question again with an implied answer that James gives the answer. He says, was not Abraham our father justified by works? Absolutely. When he had offered up Isaac upon the altar. Look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. Hebrew writer says, by faith or through faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also received him in a figure. What if Abraham had responded to God when God told him to offer him up as a sacrifice, his only son? By Sarah, the, the promise son, the seed of promise. What did he say? Why, Lord? This, this is the child of promise that you have given to me. This is too much to bear to kill him. Isn't belief enough? Isn't that what we would say? What does James say? No. Belief is not enough. So what does God say? Belief is not enough. It will not justify a person. Belief alone or faith alone. Well, this kind of response in Abraham's life demonstrate complete reliance, complete trust, complete confidence in God? Absolutely not. Let me tell you what this kind of faith would have demonstrated. A dead faith is what James would say. An inactive faith. What does obedience state? That we trust God. That God's going to keep His word. That if we do what He's commanded, God is going to carry out what He has promised us. Stand on those promises. You know, we sing the song, standing on the promises of God, we can. He will not lie. He is trustworthy. Obedience means that we are willing to do whatever God has commanded us to do. Whatever He's required of us to do. That's faith. Just the confession that I believe in God is not faith. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. And I'd like for us to begin reading in verses 9 through 12. Then we're going to pick up in verse 16. 
In Genesis chapter 22, beginning in verse 9, it says, And they came to the place which God had told them of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. You tie in this and you tie in the book Hebrews chapter 11 with what Abraham did. Abraham. In, in what I see, had that knife in his hand, ready to bring it down with all force upon his son to slay him as a sacrifice unto God. And an angel stopped him. When you look at these verses, and substitute the word faith with the words by mental assent, Abraham would not have been justified. When justification was given to Abraham, we have the picture of a courtroom. A judge is pronouncing Abraham justified, just as if he had never sinned. That's what justification means. What produced the works? In James 2, verse 22, he says, do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect? In the King James Version, it says faith wrought his works. What produced the works? His faith wrought his works. Wrought means to work together, to help in work, to be a partner in labor, to put forth power together with and thereby to is assist. Faith and works are working in unison one with the other in perfect harmony. They have a common goal. Their goal is justification. When you put an emphasis upon works over faith, you're not teaching what the Bible states. If you're putting emphasis upon belief and not works, you're not teaching what the Bible states. So we see Abraham's faith cooperating with works when he offers up Isaac upon the altar. The New King James Version says, Do you see that faith was working together with his works? Another translation says, you see that faith was active along with his works. Another one says, you see, he was trusting God as much that he was willing to do whatever God told him to do. His faith was made complete by what he did, by his actions. Abraham's works did not earn him justification. That is not what James is teaching. Look at verse 23. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. The Bible tells us that there is only one thing we earn as the result of being sinners. There's only one thing that we earn. We're all sinners before God. And, the, and that is Death in Romans 6 23. He says, For the wages of sin, we're all sinners. It's been proven. Romans 3 9 10, we're all under sin, for we all have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3 23. For the wages of sin is death. Romans 6 23. But the gift, notice, some translations have, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, justification, eternal life, salvation, sanctification is a free gift unto us through Jesus Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it says, For he hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, 
that we, notice what he says, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It's only in Jesus that God's righteousness is reckoned unto us. It is God that pronounces Abraham justified, righteous. This was God's actions towards Abraham. And I submit to you that that was grace. In Ephesians 2.8, he says the same thing. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Romans 4.9 is another example. We see that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. The word reckon, reckon means to count, to credit to one's person. Metaphorically, Thayer says the word means to place to one's account, to put down to a person's account. Excuse me, it's the same word imputed in James chapter 2, verse 23. It's the same word reckon in Romans chapter 4. As the result of Abraham's faith and his obedience, we can substitute works for obedience, righteousness was credited, counted unto him. Now, not his own righteousness, it was God's righteousness that was credited unto him. Isaiah 64, verse 6. But we are all as unclean thing, and all our unrighteousnesses are as filthy rags. But now what made Abraham's faith perfect? Verse 22. His works. His works. Now notice verse 21 and 22. And I want you to notice, is it work? Or works? Is it singular or is it plural? Was not Abraham my father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. Works is plural. It was not a one in a lifetime work that justified Abraham, and it will not be a one-in-a-lifetime work that will justify us as a result of our faith. Abraham was a man of faith. He walked by faith. Without sin, no. But if we walk by faith, we'll have works. That means we're walking in the light. If we're walking in the light, 1 John 1, 7-9, through 9, the blood of Christ continually cleanses us from our sins. Listen to Genesis chapter 26, verse 5, concerning Abraham. The text says, Because that Abraham obeyed my voice. This is what God said. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. This suggests that there were many works in Abraham's life that he had as directed by God as a result of his faith. The offering up of Isaac in the next verse is a demonstration of Abraham's faith. Abraham's faith in God caused him to do what God commanded him to do. His works, plural, served as the perfect proof of his faith. Without the works, his faith would have been unperfected. His faith would have been incomplete. James would have said his faith would have been dead. What was reckoned or imputed unto Abraham as a result of this kind of faith? Righteousness. Not his own righteousness, but the righteousness of our Lord. Genesis 15, 6 states this also. It says, And he believed in the Lord, and it counted, and he counted it to him for righteousness. God did not say this to Abraham after he had offered up Isaac. It was perhaps some 20 years before Isaac was ever born that God made that statement. 
So James gives us some insight on Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. The faith which God recognized and counted for righteousness and Abraham was not perfected, consummated, until he proved it in his obedience concerning his son, Isaac. Abraham was called the friend of God in verse 23 of James 2. And what's James' conclusion concerning Abraham? Verse 24. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. James asked earlier if a man without works could save anyone. The answer is no. He now states that faith plus works is equal to justification, is equal to salvation. So in other words, he states that faith minus works, which is faith only, is equal to an unsaved state. An unsaved condition. When was he justified? When he obeyed God. The text does not say that it was Abraham's conviction that was reckoned unto him for righteousness. When one says, I believe I am justified because I believe and someday I shall obey it is com completely opposite of what God's word does say. It's warping God's word. It's twisting God's word. Now let's look at the faith of Rahab, the justification of Rahab, the salvation of Rahab, verses 25. Through 26 in James chapter 2. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Jane goes from Abraham to a prostitute, to a harlot. Everybody thinks and knows that Abraham had many works as a result of his faith. Then James turns to a streetwalker. He turns to someone that you, many people, would have thought would never be worthy of salvation. Is that why we don't take the gospel to people whom we don't think that is worthy of salvation? Everyone. Jesus died for everybody. I don't care what sin you've committed, you can be forgiven for it. And that is, we are to take the gospel to sinners. That's whom Jesus came to seek and to save. The ones that are lost. Look at the comparison. We have a Gentile, Rahab, versus a Jew, Jesus. We have an immoral woman. I'm, I'm sorry, not a Jew uh, referring to Abraham. Gentile, a Jew. Immoral woman, a godly man. A woman versus a man on top of that. An ancestor of Jesus versus an ancestor of Jesus. Both are in the lineage of Jesus. We find Rahab in Genesis 2 and Genesis chapter 6. She's living in Jericho. I'm sorry, James chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 6. She's living in Jericho. Remember, the Israelites are across the Jordan River. They're ready to attack. And don't you know that news was spreading how powerful the Israelites were defeating army after army, as we will read in a minute. And Joshua spent spies into Jericho. And to find out things concerning the city. Listen as we read verse 1. And Joshua the son of Nun out, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And a problem arises, verses 2 through 3. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither, Tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, 
which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. Rahab had a choice to make. Remain loyal to her king, remain loyal to her country, remain loyal to her city, or put her faith, trust, and confidence in God of the Israelites that she had heard of. And she acts in accordance with her convictions. She believed in God. She had faith. Look with me again in Joshua 2, beginning in verse 9 through 11. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, the two men that came that she hid, and that your terror is fall upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Notice, I know the Lord hath given you the land. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon, and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, He is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Notice what she confessed. Now therefore I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show me kindness in my father's house, and give me a true token, and so forth. Notice verse 15. She lit them down by cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. She had faith. She had acknowledged her belief in God. But it wasn't her belief that saved her. It wasn't her mental assent that saved her. It wasn't her confession that saved her. Well, Billy, what saved her? Her actions, her works mingled with her faith. It was the fact that she, that she saved the lives of the spies by hiding them, then sending them away in another direction because she knew that they were the servants of God. By her works, she showed her faith. She showed that her faith was real. It was not just mental assent of God's existence. It was more than saying, I know that God exists. And that he has the power to save and to destroy. And it took a lot of great courage for her to do what she did. She went against her people. She went against her city. She went against her government. She helped the enemy. She helped God's people. She could have been put to death by the king of Jericho for her actions. As well as probably all of her family. She laid her life on the line. Now notice verse 26, James summarizes again. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. The body is dead when the spirit leaves the body. For example, Genesis 25, 8. Then Abraham gave up the ghost, the spirit, and died in a good old age, an old man, full of years, and was gathered to his people. You remember what? In Luke 23, verses 46 of the crucifixion of Jesus, Jesus cried out with a loud voice and said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. The spirit, apart from the body, the body is dead. Faith is dead also if it's separated from works, if it has no works. It destroys the ideas of confession is all that is needed for justification. It destroys the ideas of a one a day, one a day weak Christianity. It destroys the ideas of once saved, always saved. The body represents faith. Works represents life in that body. The spirit being in that body. The works mingling with faith. So here's a body. How are we going to know if that body is dead or alive if it moves around? If it doesn't move around, it's dead. Somebody says, well, that's stupid. It's a very stupid illustration. Take it up with God. Take it up with James. Take it up with the Holy Spirit. This is what the, 
the Lord's Word says. You cannot give a body life simply by moving its parts or simply by saying that this body is alive. It must have the Spirit. If our faith isn't moving around, our faith is dead. There is no action. It is void of action, movement, and works. Abraham and Rahab were justified by faith and works. Not by faith only. Not by works only. The two are inseparable as we look at verses 14 through 26. No man will ever be moved to obey God without belief. And no man's faith is genuine unless it moves him to action. The question is, the question for all of us, even myself, how much faith do I have? How much faith do you have? Do I, do you have enough faith to surrender my will, for you to surrender your will to the Lord? And to become his slave, to become his servant. Abraham was called a friend of God. Wouldn't it be wonderful if God would say that about us today? Would you like God to say that about you? Listen to the words of Jesus found in John 15 14. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Hey, we can be a friend of Jesus today if we put our faith in Him, if we obey His commands. Do you have a saving faith? Demonstrate it. Maybe we need to be responding the way the father of a son who had an evil spirit that entered into him. In Mark chapter 9, verse 24, the father of the child cries out and said this with tears, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. If your religion hasn't changed your life, hasn't resulted in you being a friend of Jesus Christ, then you'd better change your religion. There's not but one religion that's acceptable unto God, and it is the Christian religion. It is people who put their complete trust and confidence in God and obey God. Listen to the words of Jesus. Unless you believe that I am He, you shall die in your sins. John 8, verse 24. In Luke 13, verse 3 and verse 5, repent or you shall perish. In Matthew 10, verse 32 and verse 33, he says, Whosoever shall confess me before men, I shall confess him before the Father which is in heaven. In John chapter 3, verses 3 through 5, we must be born again of the water and the Spirit to be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's amazing that people who claim that they have salvation with faith alone really don't believe that because they know that they've got to repent and most of them know they have to confess. But what many miss is being born again of the water and the Spirit to enter into the kingdom of heaven. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Mark 16, 16. Repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2.38 And then the Lord will add you to the church when you're saved. Acts 2 verse 47 Do you have that kind of faith to be obedient unto God? To become a friend of God? to become a friend of Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening today and may we all grow in grace 
and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ.